Hey, what's going on guys? Stan here like usual, and today I'm going to be continuing the Unity 3D tutorial series. And in this episode, we will be finishing up the random enemy movement. So, let's get started. If you've been following along, you should have something along the lines of this, whatever this is. And, um, so if we, if we go ahead and we play. Okay. He, he's a little weird, but uh, we kind of started with random enemy movement, and he's kind of moving around. So we're going to finish this up and make it a little bit more special, and make him only follow us whenever we're within a specific area to him. So what we're going to need to do is, like the previous episode, open up your enemy movement, wait for it to load. And I've got two, like usual, because I always test things real quick before I go ahead and record. And we're going to need a few new variables. So we're going to need var damp x, which is going to be a float. And then var damp z, which is also going to be a, f a float helps if I spell it right. And then we're going to need var time switch. You can name uh, this whatever you wanted. I just wanted to do time switch because I don't know. I haven't used the word switch in a while. And you're going to set that equal to 100. And it really doesn't matter what you have it set equal to um, dependent upon how large the playing area is. Or maybe you want a larger number or a smaller number but 100 is going to work for our purposes. So, down here in the um, update function, we're going to change this if statement from if transform.position.x and so forth to if time switch is less than or equal to zero. And then we're going to go ahead and remove this and replace it with time switch is then equal to 100 or whatever you started it as up here. So if I said this was without a thousand, so if I said 1,000, and then down here I would need to set it also equal to 1,000, just dependent upon which number you use. It doesn't matter. Um, and then we need to do create tar point and then down here in the else statement just below it we're going to put below our transform dot get component we're going to put this below it the time switch minus equals one multiplied by time dot delta time so what this is going to do is it's going to subtract 1 from our time switch variable, which is equal to 100, according to time.delta time. So what time.delta time does, if I haven't already explained it, uh, what it'll do is it will not, like if we did time dot, oh, I can't remember what the other ones were, but time.delta time, it runs it based upon the speed at which the script is like running rather than at the speed at which the game is running. So if you were running it on a really laggy system, uh, time dot delta time would not change if we, um, but if we were to use something else, then it would vary based upon the speed of the system. So time dot delta time is standard, and we're going to want to use this. Um, not that we have to worry about lag or anything, but just to be safe. And down here in our create tar point going to go ahead and use our damp our um, damping variables to just do some minor adjustments and uh, so what we're going to do here is uh, if, if you heard that I'm sorry it's just a message but uh, damp x is equal to random dot range 
and then in here we're going to do 1.0 comma 3.0 and the reason why we're doing the point O's is for uh, uh, considering this is a float variable we're going to want to make these numbers floats so by adding the decimal place and then the zero makes these numbers floats and we need to do the same for the uh, damp Z so you can go ahead and just change that X to a Z and then down here with our TARS we're going to minus uh, TAR X so it'll do the random dot range figure out a number and then we're going to minus our damp X and same for the damp Z to give it more of a variety so instead of it just being these numbers now we're going to have these numbers messing around with it um, and then down here in on trigger enter if you scroll come on it's a little weird uh, we're going to go ahead and copy our if statement that we've already gotten in here instead of retyping it because that'll take forever and no one wants to do that and then we're going to replace a bullet with player and then adjust death that is equal to true and we're going to replace it with uh, coal dot no sorry target target is equal to coal dot transform so basically what we've written is uh, if time switch is not less than or equal to zero then this is what's going to happen it's going to go to our position we've declared by the uh, start function so we've cr already created a tar point at the beginning of the game it's going to go to this and time switch is going to subtract one uh, by time dot delta time and then if it hits zero then time switch will reset itself back to 100 and it'll create a new tar point so instead of the previous system where we had the uh, if it was if the position was equal to the exact number we picked which did not really work out now we've got a system so that way it'll choose a new number every 100 whatever and um, the damps will further randomize our positions that he'll travel to and then this is checking to see if uh, the target like if the player is within the trigger then target will be equal to the collision transform so that will be the player and obviously right here if target isn't equal to null then it will go for this position else then it will do all this and uh, we'll need one more function so function on trigger exit and inside the parentheses we're going to do coal again I mean you can do whatever you want just as long as you use it the correct way and that is going to be for collider uh, I'm not good at spelling today wonderful and then down in here we're, we're, we're going to do if dot perhaps it'll just be easier if we copy this as I said previously who wants to retype things and then we're going to replace coal dot transform with null so what this is going to do instead is if we exit the trigger then his target will be equal to null so therefore he will then choose his random position and go to it. So if we go ahead and minimize this, come back into Unity, and what we're going to need to do is readjust this so that way he can work a little bit. 
better with the area because since the numbers aren't technically really going into negatives, he won't visit specific parts of the map. He'll kind of just stay in a one localized area. So we're going to center this at 5, 5. So now everything is positive on here if that makes any sense. And because we moved everything, we're going to need to bake it, make sure that this tile is now blue. Mine was already blue because I had to do a run through real quick to make sure that everything was working fine. It is now. And um, I have no idea why the player's levitating, but that's uh, beside the point. And now, if we go ahead and reselect re our uh, our enemy. We're going to go ahead and go to physics in the com component menu and add a sphere collider. And we're going to go ahead and make it a trigger. We're going to center it. And then we're going to set this equal to, let's say, 4. That should be good. Save everything. And hit play. So as you can see, he's kind of moving around. He's moving around again. Oh, he found me. Run! Run away! Okay. As you can see, he is randomly choosing new positions to move to. And hopefully he'll come closer to me, or I'll have to do it for myself. And as you can see, this number is counting down, and every time it hits zero, he chooses a new position to move to. Uh, he's not going to come to me, is he? I'm cheating. Come on. Come on. Darn you. But anyway, you, you, yeah, you, you saw this, where um, if I move over here, as you can see, he's not coming for me. And if I attempt to leave his zone... he'll move on to random positions. Now the problem is, is with having the larger trigger, uh, we can hit him easier, but we can work ways around that later on. For right now, uh, we've got a randomly moving, moving, moving enemy AI that will choose new positions randomly and uh, has a timer to it, and if he comes within our radius, then he will you know, chase us. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and if you've got any more suggestions, uh, leave them in the comment section below. I will finish the GUI uh, programming thing next video, and then after that, I may cover uh, saving your game data. Uh, and then after that, I've, I have like no idea what we should cover so if you've got any ideas please leave them below because I'm running out of source like uh, materials and stuff so um, yeah I'll see you guys next time and take care